Today we're going to take a look at what's inside this spider ball launcher and how it's made inside and how to take it apart. This magazine comes off. The magazine has its own little motor in there. We're going to take this apart later also. So there are a lot of screws in this thing. Let's take out all these little tiny screws. First thing we do is remove this battery cover here. There's another screw in here also. We've got some screws up here on the sights. And these sights also do the job of holding this shell together. These do need to be removed. There's a hidden screw under here under the back sight. There's some tape in here, so we'll have to cut this tape. I'm totally expecting some springs to pop here because we got a few things that are spring loaded. Like this is spring loaded. There we go. So this shell is probably made from ABS. I don't think it's nylon, but it is pretty thick ABS. It's not very cheap quality. It's, it's a substantial amount of plastic material there. Looks like a good part of the weight of this blaster is just a slug of steel in the front here. That adds a lot of weight to this blaster and makes it feel substantial. So. Hopefully it's not like depleted uranium or something. The interior of this blaster looks quite nice. The components in here are a lot higher quality than the gel blaster Surge, which this only sells for $20 more retail than the Surge does. Really the only reason I'd buy the Surge over this is for being compact and also looking less like a gun, more like a sci-fi blaster. This has a big motor in comparison. Looks like nylon gears a transparent gearbox, don't know what material that is, and it looks like an aluminum piston cylinder, an aluminum barrel, some metal parts in here, metal tappet, and a spring that looks like you can possibly replace this spring in the back. So some of the first things that popped out here were this butt stock release. Whoops, now that flew off. So inside of here, there's more screws, especially holding the barrel in place here. Looks like the gearbox can lift out and slide out, but there's, there's wires still trapped behind there. But let's see. Yeah, I can lift and slide that out. We have a metal plunger here. I'm going to unscrew this here. That's just a cover for the T-piece. Here's another assembly that's the slide for the battery cover. So here comes the, the T-piece, the barrel. Does it come off? Is it glued in? It spins a little bit. I don't want to force it too much because we know it's there. Um, this piece comes off the end, so you can remove the muzzle end. You also have the aluminum barrel. Looks like pretty good quality there. Now this gives me access to get to this stuff in here, to the gearbox. So on the other side of the shell, all that we have left is the selector switch, which has its own screw there. And here's the snap for the magazine. Take a look at how this is made and what makes it click. Looks like there's just three detent holes in there and then a small plunger on this side with a spring and just snaps in and out of those detent holes to set the position and the feel and the sound. It's 
Go ahead and put that back together to not lose that. It's a lot of small parts. Let's take a closer look at this gearbox and how this gearbox is made. A lot of parts in here, a lot of stuff going on. This is definitely a lot more complicated gearbox than the Surge was. Looks like we actually have some ball bearings here. They're shielded on the first gear that's, that the motor pinion drives. This other one uses bushings, nylon bushings. And that gear uses nylon bushings too. This gearbox looks very similar to a Wells 36G gel blaster gearbox. Uh, it's almost identical. We can, and if you look at the Wells 36G, the body shape and everything, you'll notice that like, it looks like Splatterball um, had them modify the body shape slightly for their own use. But the gearbox and everything looks almost identical. Like really the only difference is there's on the Wells 36G, there's a little attachment point down here. And that's about it. Um, everything else looks very similar. There's different versions of the motor. The gears are probably the same gears, so if you need spare parts for this, you can probably get Wells 36G blaster parts to repair this, or even the gearbox to repair this gearbox. Then the Wells 36G even has the option for metal gearbox. The selector switch slide looks exactly the same on the 36G. So this Spider ball blaster is really just a modification of the Wells 36G. And I don't know if they use the same spring or not, but here I'm gonna compare the spring to the spring in my P90 blaster gearbox. Take a look at the spring here. The P90 Blaster has a shorter spring with fewer coils than the Spider Ball. The Spider Ball Blaster has a longer spring with more coils in it. Let's look at the outer diameter, 13.9, 14 millimeters, 13.8, it's about the same. On the Spider Ball, the wire diameter is 1.16. Then on the P90, the wire diameter is 1.1. The additional coils are gonna make this spring more linear as it compresses. The force is gonna be more linear than on the P90. The P90, the force is gonna increase a lot as it compresses. So the P90 shoots a little bit harder than the spider ball, but they probably did this with the spider ball on, on purpose to um, kind of lower the FPS a little bit, lower the spring force, so it's less likely to damage the gears and the motor. But you could replace the spring with a stronger spring and get higher FPS out of this. In fact, that would be an interesting modification to try to hit maybe 250 FPS with this blaster. While I had the case apart, I gave it a little bit more of a toy-like paint job kind of make it look more like Nerf. So let's start putting this back together. And the first thing I need to put back in is the selector switch, which I removed. A little bit tricky to get the selector switch back into the position. Let's see. Okay. Selector switch is back in.
this massive weight back in here. Gotta make sure we get all the pieces back in. You have to line these pins up here to get this in. There we go. Line that up. Tricky. Tricky, tricky, tricky. Okay, put the back in first. And then line this one up here. And that's shut. And then Line up the front. Make sure that the wires aren't getting pinched. Line this up here. There we go. That seems to have mostly come together. Okay. So now it's come together. I want to start putting in some screws here to keep it together in the important areas. Doesn't pop apart. Remember that when you're putting these screws in here, you want to make sure to you you back up first till you feel like a kind of bump, so you're getting into the same thread. You don't want to be making a new thread in the plastic. Don't overdrive it to strip the plastic either. Boom. Still works. Everything came together. I actually like this color scheme. Gives it a very Nerf appearance. This magazine is also an almost exact copy of the Wells G36 magazine. The main difference is the magazine is quite a bit wider, so they made it bigger to be able to hold more gels. The G36 magazine is about the same width as the top here, so it's narrower. This all looks the same at the top, even the fill flap and everything. It looks like almost an identical magazine, just a little bit extra width. 